Today, we look at one of the most unexpected moves in chess. No, not as unexpected as that tomato I just threw at the screen, but still pretty unexpected. It's called the exchange sacrifice. And that's where you temporarily forget that $5 is worth more than three, and you give away a rook for a knight or a bishop. There's at least four times I can think of where you might want to sacrifice the exchange. Number one, to weaken the enemy king. We're gonna look at that first. Number two, to gain more control of the center. Number three, to get an outpost, or at least a strong minor piece. Or number four, sometimes even for defensive purposes. This first example comes from the Sicilian, and black is Vasily Ivanchuk, Hello. the grandmaster we like to call Chucky. And in the Sicilian, it's very common to give away a rook for a knight. What are we getting for our two-point investment? Well, we're greatly weakening the white king, and in fact, we could capture a center pawn here. Grandmasters do this all the time, giving away the exchange to win one of the center pawns. But Chucky is more interested in checkmate than that silly little pawn, and he plays knight c5, getting another piece close to the white king, also triple attacking the pawn. Oh, no. Now white sees a way to defend his e-pawn. He first makes a trade and puts his rook over here. Let's take a timeout, though. Look at black's knight here on the square, c5. Is that knight as good as the white rooks? I would say so. In fact, in today's video, you're going to notice that the extra rook almost never has an open file to attack on. Hmm. Make sure if you sacrifice the exchange, your opponent's rooks don't get those open lines. Here, black brings another piece over toward the white king, and there's really not much surviving. White does try for some open files, but it's too little too late. In fact, it opens up a diagonal for the bishop. Bishop to d5, everything is coming toward the white king. Queen takes. Ow and white desperately tries to sacrifice some stuff to get rid of the attack, but black is not even interested in that rook. Black plays the move knight a4, and white had to resign. Good luck trying to stop queen b2 checkmate. On to the next position. The king of exchange sacrifices was former world champion Tigran Petrosian. Petrosian did this a couple dozen times in his career. We're going to look at a few of his games today. In this first example, he has a double attack on the square e4. Now I'm sure you're looking at taking with the bishop, but this annoying move c3 and the black rook on b4 has a little bit too much to do. So instead, Petrosian sacrificed on e4 with the rook. And after this move, pawn c4, pawn h6, a couple of extra moves thrown in here. Eventually the rook was captured. And after pawn takes, look at all of these center pawns coming down the board. Rook to d1, d5, and that's right. Petrosian got himself the snow plow, we all remember what that means. And when this pawn comes down the board of the square d4, you can very easily see that that central control is way more important than the exchange that black has sacrificed. On to our next one, Petrosian is up to his old tricks. Knight to e3, gotta save our rook. Most of us, before watching the video today, probably would have thought about bringing the rook over to the square a4, or maybe to the square c5. Those seem like the only options, but no, we know all about Mr. Petrosian. He's willing to give away that exchange to get more control of the center. In fact, we got a fun one coming up here. After takes and takes, he's not done giving away all of his money. Knight to c2, d5, that bishop is now on an outpost. Knight to d4, and white tries to get an outside pass pawn, but queen a7, and this knight is in a really bad pin. He is going nowhere fast. He has cement boots on. Queen to f2, trying to get out of the pin. Look at this. Even though there's an open file, it's black's rook that controls the open file. And if I speed forward a few more moves here, we have a fun thing coming up. We have another exchange sacrifice, rook c3. White better take that rook because rook to f3 looks really deadly. And after takes and takes, look at these bishops and past pawns. They are way more dominant than the rooks. And the game concluded in a few more moves. As you can very plainly see here, black is actually a head material. A bishop yeah. and three pawns for the rook. And Mr. Petrosian went on to win. Our next example of sacrifice in the exchange comes from Gary Kasparov, and he's going to show us that on very rare occasions you can sacrifice the exchange to get a really dominant minor piece. In this position, White is worried about his best piece getting traded, so Kasparov does an amazing idea. He throws tomatoes to the black bishop, rook takes, knight takes, and what does that do? Well, that pretty much guarantees that this knight is never going to be able to be traded. Remember, it takes a knight four turns to go two squares diagonal, so the black knight's not getting there anytime soon. And of course, the black bishop's on the wrong color. It is very easy to see that white's knight is much stronger than the extra black rook, and Kasparov went on to win a really nice game.
One more example from Pentrosian. I told you at the beginning of the video that a final reason to sacrifice the exchange might be for defensive purposes. Here, white is about to play d5 and get the snow plow. That'll leave black out in the cold. So what does Petrosian do? He plays the really creative rook to e6. And his idea is that when the rook gets captured, he will take back with the pawn. And those white pawns are both in cement boots. Obviously, that one cannot move. If this one moves forward, our rook is there waiting to capture it. Both white rooks have a battery, but they're biting on rock. And on the next two moves, this really nice rerouting of the knight to the outpost will solidify that knight on d5 forever. Our final example is my favorite one of all time. I'm just going to show you the moves with really brief analysis. We're going to enjoy. Black is Alexei Shirov. He wrote a book called Fire on Board. Well, not literal fire. That'd be against the rules to start a fire on the chessboard. So he played rook takes d5. This is exchange sacrifice number one. That's right. He's not done. And in a couple more moves here, he eventually puts his rook on the half open file. And he plays rook takes e3, a second exchange sacrifice. He's got control of the center. He's got a weakened white king. He's putting all of my ideas together. And he is going to have a really nice victory. Watch the finish to the game here. He plays a bishop sacrifice. Queen takes. He collects the first rook. And now the problem for white, white can't very well take the bishop with either piece because of the pawn fork g4. And the conclusion of the game was the king taking. And after takes, we have one, two, three, four, five pawns for the rook. The concluding moves were f4 and then f5. And in this position, white resigned. There was not a good way to stop g4 check and if the king moves we have various different ideas queen h2 is mate that white king is surrounded by the wrong color pawns boys and girls rooks aren't always worth more than knights and bishops this is a complicated lesson but if you master the idea you will be able to throw some tomatoes at your opponent